Hi, welcome to Whiteboard Wednesdays. We are continuing our series on Global Traffic Manager load balancing algorithms. And last week, John covered kind of the transition between wide IP and pool and how pool works a little bit differently in that you have the preferred alternate and fallback methods. And so we're going to talk about the static load balancing algorithms today. And I'm not going to talk about global availability or round robin or ratio or topology because we've already covered that at the wide IP level and they work the same at the pool. But what I would like to talk about is uh, return to DNS, and we'll start with that, and we'll work our way down through the rest of them. And so how return to DNS works is you have your LDNS server out here, and you have your GTM, and then you have your pools with servers in them. Say we'll have, this will be P1, and that's server, virtual server one, two, and three in that pool. And you have pool two. Of course, you have servers one, two, and three in there. And so how return to DNS works is if at if in my pool here I have a preferred method of let's say hops. And then for my alternate method, I'm gonna do return to DNS. If my, my configuration is here and I come into this pool, GTM selects this pool, maybe say at the wide, wide IP level, I'm round robin. And so first request comes in here to pool one and pool one does not have any statistics for that LDNS server for any of these, these VIPs. And so it's going, to fall, it's going to fall down from preferred to alternate and my alternate is returned to DNS. What it's going to do is it's actively gonna to signal to that LDNS uh, no dice and via the refused um, status. So gets the request and it returns that request with a response, but the response is refused. I'm not gonna handle that. And what return to DNS is good for is if you wanna take a pool out of service, either because it's down um, or that you're gonna do maintenance or you're struggling with some kind of a, a capacity issue in a particular area, you can use the um, the return to DNS, and it will actively signal to the LTNS, LDNS that, that it's unavailable. Uh, very similar to that, but more passive, is the dropped packet. And so that option is, let's stay on hops here, and let's, uh, let's say that the, our alternate is uh, drop packet. And what that, what that literally is going to do is, again, let's say that request comes in to GTM, GTM passes that down now to pool two. The last request was, was uh, uh, the previous example. Now, second request comes in, that comes down to pool two, and pool two is configured with uh, a pre preference of hops, but the alternate is drop packet. And so, rather than actively signaling the LDNS server, what it's going to do is it's literally just going to drop that packet. It's not going to respond to that request. So, of course, the LDNS has its own timers, when it doesn't get a response in, in X amount of seconds, it's going to then make another request. All right, now we're gonna move on to the none selection. And none is a little bit more unique in that with return to DNS and drop packet, that's more instructions for the LDNS to do something different. With none, you're, you're telling GTM to do something a little different. And so what happens is, uh, we're gonna stay with our example of hops here. And so third request comes in here from the LDNS, GTM is going to round robin that back to pool one. And in pool one, I still don't have any data here. And what happens is uh, with the alternate of none is it instructs GTM to go ahead and go to the next pool. And now because that is none, it'll come down to the next pool and my preference is round robin. So it's just going to pick one of these servers, say one, and then so that VIP is going to be returned to the LDNS. Another option we have as a static algorithm at the pool level is fallback IP. And what that's useful for, like disaster uh, recovery scenarios where all, uh, say, uh, you, you've worked through your pools, and we'll give another example here, where round robin, um, or LDNS makes a request for myexample.com, round robin comes down here to pool two, and pool two's configuration is, I'm gonna do a round robin, but at this point, these are all down. 
I don't have an alternate, I say none on alternate, and I come back to fallback, and if I configure my fallback mode as fallback IP, then it will take from the pool settings your IPv4 or IPv6 address. And, you know, it's recommended that, that these addresses are not one of the pool members in one of your uh, application um, configuration, that it would actually be some kind of service that's going to be available, whether that's just a remediation page or a, sorry, we're an available page out in the cloud or in your data center that you are pretty sure is always going to be available. But uh, the, uh, the configuration there uh, would be fallback IP and just de describe those in your pool configuration. The final method we'll talk about today is static persist. And what static persist allows you to do is to persist an LDNS server to one of your VIPs in the pool. And so let's say we have three LDNS servers connecting to these um, to this pool member or to this pool. And on this pool, my preferred method is static persist. Okay? And so GTM has a, an algorithm that will order the pool members uh, with, uh, for each LDNS server uniquely so that you know, all the LDNSs don't get bound to, to one um, pool member. And so let's say, for example, for LDNS 1, that order is server 1, 2, 3. For 2, it's 2, 3, 1. And for 3, it's 3, 1, 2. And so in the event I lose server 3, then that means LDNS server 3 is then going to be moved to server 1. LDNS 1 and 2 are going to be fine. But then if I lose also server 1, now LDNS 3 is going to get moved again. And um, 3 was already gone. 2 stays where it was. And because LDNS 1 lost, it's going to get moved to number 2. And, and that's how static persist works. Now, when these servers are recovered, so when everything is all in well and they're back up, when, when everything's all in well, uh, then this goes back to normal. And LDNS 3 will be returned to 3. LDNS 2 still remains on 2. LDNS 1 comes back to one. So that wraps our static load balancing algorithms at the pool level in GTM. Come back next week where we're going to start talking about the dynamic load balancing algorithms for GTM and how monitors at the GTM level play into that. And the story is a little different with GTM than it is in LTM. So look forward to seeing you guys out in the community. Thanks.